Doug Fincher joins us from Ionic Capital Management. He's a portfolio manager and seems generally still focused, Doug, on how to uh, build our portfolios up against inflationary risks. So where are we in that process and uh, how much should we really be bracing for inflationary pressures still in our investments? Hey Oliver, nice to nice to see you. Um, I know you've been in the higher for longer camp for a while, and I think that's, that's right. really what you know. That's what shook the market this this past month. Um, there's a really interesting article from uh, Nick Timros in the Journal today, uh, and he you know he tends to have the Fed's ear and vice versa. And the thing that he talked about was inflation volatility, and I think that's pretty pretty interesting. You know, we we come from a period of disinflation for a long time, and we think clearly you're you're in a period of inflation, and a lot of a lot of investors haven't seen that. Um, you know, apologies to Kathy Wood, but zero percent interest rates and two percent inflation are, are not the norm. Um, you know, four and a half percent, ten year is the norm, and and you know, inflation elevated above the Fed's target. You know, with the potential for for spikes like we saw last year. I think that's the that's the norm, and 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 that's what we're expecting. Last year, it was uh, really brutal on the 60-40 structure of the portfolio because our stocks sold off at the same time as our bonds. And uh, there was also a big yield curve inversion that was going on at the same time. Today, we've got something different uh, where it seems like stocks still are not a big fan of yields going up. But we got a little steepening this time around, and the Fed's not even having to cut. Is there some hope here, Doug, that... Um, Maybe there will be parts of equities that work. Uh, maybe we can hedge for inflation and stay within the stock asset class. Is that possible? I think that's possible. One of the things that we've, you know, the the economics 101 says inverted curve means um, means recession. And I think naively a lot of investors were looking at the curve being inverted and saying, oh, no, it's just it's, it's a, an acknowledgement that inf inflation is going to be under control and everything's gonna be fine. We're gonna have soft landing, and I think it's a, it's a lot more complicated. You said that, as you said that that inversion's narrowed by about 100 basis points, but, but, but with the long end moving up, and you know rates at that level, um, you know can break something. It's mm. you know, we're I, I saw today the the short interest in KRE is higher than it was um, during the March banking mini crisis. Um, you know you could argue that. Things are as tenuous for the banks in this kind of environment. Um, not to mention private credit or you know anybody that's anybody that's lending, um, anybody that's borrowing at that rate. It's it's difficult. But you know back to that just that inflation volatility. You were talking about energy prices before. Um, if I was on the show three weeks ago, we would have been saying, "Oh my God, ninety-five dollar crude." Um, you know, next stop one hundred and twenty. Two weeks later, it's a sigh of relief that that we're at 85, and I, I think it's kind of hard to argue what what the driver is. But one of the things that you know we've been saying to clients is that you can have inflation in a, in a recession. You know, you you look at oil. If if it's a soft landing, you're not going to dent the the supply demand imbalance. And you know, OPEC says cut, and and you, you know you could see oil go up. So you know that that stagflation scenario isn't. It, it, it's always out there. I think um, mm -hmm. it's it's, it's got to be a risk, but it's yeah. It's been you know you talked about this year. It's actually the, it'll be the third year that people have gotten pummeled by bonds, and that's why we launched this this inflation ETF. I mean the 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 uh, the, the boogeyman for bonds is is higher rates and higher inflation, and and this product's done extremely well since we launched it a couple of years ago. I was looking today, we're up we're up over five percent. On the inflation ETF since we launched in July of 22, the ag's down over five percent during that time, and even tips are flat. So you you know tips they they protect your money, but you don't make any money off inflation. This product's designed to uh, there you go, you're stealing my thunder. You know we're designed to make money off inflation, and it, it's interesting that we've generated that performance when everybody would agree inflation's actually fallen. You know we had those you know those big nine percent CPI prints. Well, the summer of last year that um, you know sent markets in a tizzy, so it's it's come off those high levels, but it's still elevated above the Fed's target, and, mm. and that's you know we can make money off of that through the the positioning in uh, in inflation swaps. But so I think that walk us through, remind me, Doug, what's uh, how you construct this? What's in there? Because it looks like what you're presenting is basically an alternative 
to the ag or our bond holdings in general, not necessarily like an, an overlay or a, you know, a uh, kind of a side speculation. This is basically a replacement for core bond exposure. Well, I think it's I think it's an it's an accompaniment, um, and okay. the, the exposures are very straightforward. We own five year inflation swaps, which are the it's a clear derivative um, that gives you exposure to higher inflation and inflation expectations. Um, super liquid market, but it's an institutional market. Uh, derivatives don't require a lot of collateral, so we just um, we, we the fund owns one times notional of, of of tips. We've got some essentially inflation, excuse me, some interest rate call options through swaptions. And then with the balance of the capital, we're invested in short dated tips, and uh, you know tips are tips are really attractive. It, you've got a two and a half percent real yield um, embedded in the tip plus inflation, so it's on a standalone basis, it's it's a reasonable alternative to treasuries. But again, you're not going to make any money. Um, the exposure to um, inflation swaps is really the, uh, the the recipe, the ingredient that allows you to make money off of that that higher inflation, and, and essentially any time inflation's printing higher than the expectations and five year expectations are two and a half you're making money on your on your swap position so it's a we think it's a it's a it's the perfect it's a perfect way to hedge against higher inflation and and, and higher inflation expectations bingo all right there it is uh, well time discussion good refresher here on the options that we have here to try and protect ourselves from macro threat appreciate it doug good walk through here thanks a lot you got it. Yeah, absolutely cpii is the ticker beating the heck out of the corporate bond world and a lot of other ways to try and hedge inflation. Thanks, Doug. Iconic capital management. Ionic capital management, rather.